It's really hard not to love fried chicken. I mean, it's fried, so that obviously, you know, improves it right off the bat. Understanding and appreciating the science of what goes on when you fry something, how the food cooks, what the oil is doing, that can help you get consistency. It can help you achieve what you want in your fried chicken. You want that crispy skin, you want that crunch. But then I want juicy or succulent meat. I want it to be well seasoned and I want a lot of flavor. Fried chicken really might just be the perfect food. It seems like it's a pretty simple thing to do, to take a piece of chicken, batter coat it in some way, throw it into some hot oil, and you know, get a piece of fried chicken. But if that's really all you do, you're kind of just hoping for the best. Because you've actually got a bunch of things you're trying to achieve. I want the chicken cooked, of course I don't want it raw, but I also don't want it overcooked. I want it to still be juicy, not dry and stringy. And yet the temperatures that I need to get the crust crispy are much higher than I want that meat to get to. So there's already a balancing act between how fast am I cooking the crust versus how fast am I cooking the meat in the center. Balancing those two things is really important. The other thing that can be a challenge is the oil's an ingredient too. We don't actually think of it that way. We think of it as the medium of cooking. But we're gonna end up with a bunch of that oil in the crust and it's going to add flavor. So the quality of that oil, the condition of that oil, how the oil changes as you use it in the fryer, in addition, oil's really good at not only adding its own flavor, but it can strip flavor away. So how it takes flavor from the seasonings out of the crust and dilutes that flavor, you need to think about that too. So if you really look at what you're trying to achieve, there's this careful balance between how hot the oil is, how that crust will cook, to create the perfect fried chicken. So if you have really fresh oil and you put wet food into it, you see all these steam bubbles erupt off the surface of the food, that's water leaving the food. The oil actually probably only spends about 20% of the total cooking time actually in contact with the surface of the food because the steam's in the way. Experienced cooks or people who've done a lot of deep frying will recognize that really fresh oil doesn't brown very well, things take longer to cook. But as I use oil, and as I heat it up, and as I cook things in it, the oil molecules break down into natural emulsifiers. You'll notice the bubbles start to abate, and that helps the oil spend more time touching the food. If the oil can spend more time touching the surface of the food, it will cook the food faster. That's when the browning starts to happen. That's when the crispness starts to happen. You'll get a little bit more oil into the food, which can add flavor. But there's a tension, because it would sound like, oh, well, I just want lots of emulsifiers in my oil. But if you go too far, it spends too much time touching the food. The oil will tend to get foamy. It will tend to smoke more readily. Bits of food may have burned and imparted some of those burn flavors into the oil. And that's gonna get on your food. And burn food just doesn't taste good. You need the oil to touch the food more efficiently, but not too much to get the perfect amount of browning to cook the food in just the right amount of time. You want the oil to be spending about 50-50, about half the time touching the surface of the food and about half the time being pushed away from the surface. One of the secrets you can do if you have brand new oil is if you have a little bit of old oil, like a tablespoon, and add a tablespoon of that old oil to the brand new oil, it will actually help break it in more quickly so that it does a better job of frying. Traditionally, fried chicken was, was done in a cast iron pot like a Dutch oven. It turns out cast iron was actually really beneficial to the recipe. The benefits of cast iron versus say an aluminum pot or something lighter is that cast iron holds a tremendous amount of heat energy into it. And so when you put the food in, the oil starts to cool down, but now a bunch of that energy from the cast iron flows into the oil, helping sort of buffer and keep that temperature from falling too quickly. Now you would think if I put this on my stove top, it doesn't really matter, but the reality is all of that water leaving in the form of steam bubbles can pull energy out of the oil much faster than your gas burner or your electric burner beneath it can actually put heat energy back in. And so for quite a while, the oil temperature might fall 20, 30, 40, 50 degrees, which is gonna actually lead to greasy, not very crispy food. But if I have a heavy cast iron pot that's well preheated, it helps slow how much the, the temperature falls while the food's coming up and that gives time for the burner to catch back up. And so using a cast iron pot, if you have one, really is a, a, a great choice. <laughs>